The changes taking place in cities, in our case, New York City, go far deeper than COVID-19, which has certainly accelerated the evolution of our cities and rethinking their future. While less than 30% of those working in Manhattan have returned to their offices regularly, if at all, the commercial real estate market in New York City is robust, values still high, and many new leases being signed by major corporations, some expanding their space, even as they plan to use that space very differently than in the past. Unfortunately, as usual, much of the good news is all about Midtown Manhattan, not Lower Manhattan, as has long been the case. If you look at the Manhattan skyline, it is Lower Manhattan, which is New York City's most iconic image. Lower Manhattan looks like a magic kingdom, and it is in many ways. It should be as attractive as Midtown, as a place to work, live, play, and visit. What Lower Manhattan may lack in transportation options to Midtown, it more than makes up for in many other ways. Now, more than ever, with drastically changing views of work and office use, where increasingly decision makers do not make their office choices simply on space requirements and price, but as much on the environment that will draw their workforce to their offices to collaborate and have good reason to leave their home offices. The dynamic quality of individual buildings and as much the appeal of the surrounding community can and will play a very large part. Lower Manhattan addresses these qualities well, in fact, better than Midtown Manhattan, in my view. What is lacking is imagination, leadership, and cooperation, and an appreciation that the future will be certainly should be much different than the past. What best represents the future and the potential of Lower Manhattan is the Lower Manhattan Corridor, Wall Street to Bowling Green. It is or should be New York City's magnificent mile. From the corner of Wall Street and Broadway to Bowling Green has more unmet potential than any other place in New York City. Beginning at famous Trinity Wall Street, all the way to the most popular work of sculpture in the world today, Arturo Demodocus, three and one half ton, larger than life bronze charging bull, America's first and oldest public park, Bowling Green, and the magnificent Alexander Hamilton U.S. Custom House, and Lower Broadway, the gateway to Battery Park in New York Harbor. Midtown has nothing like this magnificent mile. If the 18 building owners along this Lower Broadway corridor cooperated in advancing, promoting, and marketing this corridor, rather than each seeing themselves as isolated buildings with nothing of importance in relationship to the other 17 owners and managers, except to compete against them in an office market that no longer exists, especially in the wake of COVID-19 and way beyond COVID-19. If they looked upon Lower Broadway as a unified campus, as the collection of buildings are in universities, and now more and more very large corporations refer to their physical properties as a campus, the more imaginative and powerful use of campus here in the 21st century is a collection of office and residential buildings and other notable structures within close proximity and that share a very important notable asset. In the case of the Lower Broadway campus, all these buildings share New York City's first and most historic street, Broadway, from the place where New Amsterdam was founded, now Bowling Green, to Wall Street, which was the northern border of New Amsterdam, protected by a wall, river to river, now world-famous Wall Street. If I can convince others to see Lower Broadway as a campus, most of all 18 building owners, not only Lower Broadway, but all of Lower Manhattan can and will have a very bright future, far beyond what most think is possible. And these 18 building owners will gain the most in realizing asset value far beyond what they think is possible. 
Everyone should be familiar with the Lower Broadway corridor or campus. There is no other mile of street in all of New York City that compares with it. Without thinking about it, you might casually say there are many other places in New York City as good as or better than Lower Broadway, Wall Street to Bowling Green. Okay, name them. I don't believe you can. No other section of New York City with the same or as significant collection of assets. Not any one of them individually, but collectively. Begin with the name Broadway. Yes, Broadway travels all the way from Bowling Green to the northern tip of Manhattan, but no other similar stretch of Broadway offers as much as does this section, the original Broadway, Bowling Green to Wall Street. New York City's very first street, dating from the early 1600s. Another clear asset for this stretch of Broadway, centuries of notable history that have taken place on or near this part of Broadway for centuries. It is the part they play as parts in a much larger view of Lower Broadway. It is the 18 buildings that make up this original stretch of Broadway today that are or better should be, at the core of its appeal. Office towers, residential buildings, and other structures all combine, or should, to offer a total experience unique in New York City. This section of Broadway has three very significant underutilized entertainment venues that should but do not play a large part in the appeal of Lower Broadway. Trinity Wall Street Church, Cipriani's Ballroom at 25 Broadway, and the Alexander Hamilton U.S. Custom House. All three should be humming year-round, each with a fabulous calendar of all-important entertainment and creativity. Instead, all three are dark most of the time, COVID or no COVID. These remarkable entertainment assets are yet another part of what should be the unique appeal of Lower Broadway. And there is much more. The historic churchyard of Trinity Wall Street is or will be, when it finally reopens again, a bucolic oasis right at the corner of Broadway and Wall Street, and where in this churchyard, the eternal resting place of one of the greatest and most famous Americans of all time, and America's greatest immigrant, Alexander Hamilton. At the other end of this lower Broadway corridor, is the place where New York City was founded as New Amsterdam in 1653, and where since 1733 has stood continuously the first and oldest public park in all of America, Bowling Green, another oasis in the midst of the fast-moving business setting, and with its flowing fountain in the warm months, and with benches enough for many to enjoy. And of all time, drawing large crowds of visitors every day and night of the year since December 1989, Arturo Demodica's three and one half ton bronze is larger than life, world famous icon, charging bull, standing at the exact southern tip of the starting point of Broadway. Let's not forget the two towering 55 foot flagpoles that share the North Plaza of Bowling Green with Charging Bull. These two flagpoles, the second erected in 1996 by the Bowling Green Association. With the addition of the second flagpole, since 1996, many national groups have come to Bowling Green to celebrate their ethnic identity here in New York City and their pride in America by raising both their flag of origin and our U.S. flag to fly side by side. Then there is the much larger South plaza of Bowling Green, directly in front of the Alexander Hamilton U.S. Custom House, a spectacular outdoor venue with the Statue of Liberty visible in the distance, where many impressive warm weather outdoor events should take place year after year, but rarely do. Again, there is no single mile anywhere in all of New York City or anywhere that combines this kind of multifaceted collection of assets, even as they are all underutilized Darkness at night, unfortunately, is the image of all of Lower Broadway, Wall Street to Bowling Green. This section of Broadway is certainly not a great white way at night, but should be. Beginning with Trinity Church and directly across Broadway, the tower floors of one Wall Street, both should be dazzlingly illuminated entryway 
to Lower Broadway. Sadly, they are not, just mostly dark and unilluminated in the evening sky. Broadway itself, from Wall Street to Bowling Green, should be brilliantly illuminated at night. It is not. Neither are any of the exteriors of the many buildings that line both sides of historic roadway, Broadway, Wall Street, to Bowling Green. The crown jewel of Lower Manhattan, the crown jewel of Lower Broadway, the entire Bowling Green Plaza, from Charging Bull to the Hamilton Custom House, should be the most impressively lighted of all. Rather, the entire plaza where New York City was founded is dark and dismal at night. It should be inconceivable. On a different level, but adding another unique factor to Lower Broadway later this year, a large, high-quality Whole Foods market. Yes, a Whole Foods market at 1 Wall Street, very visible right on Lower Broadway, just south of Wall Street. Imagine that, because it is true. Also, at 1 Wall Street, right on Broadway, later this year, a huge, very high quality, 75,000 square foot lifetime fitness center. This brings up the perfect timing of the completely restored, converted, and reopening the truly iconic One Wall Street, beginning with the ultimate address anywhere, One Wall Street. Beyond One Wall Street, on Lower Broadway, between Wall Street and Bowling Green, are seven vacant ground-level street-facing retail locations, all empty. There is more empty retail on this portion of Lower Broadway than there are occupied retail. All of it quality space, some of it even better. Perfect locations for a quality restaurant and other attractive upscale usage. All these assets are simply the foundation upon which the greatest value of Lower Broadway exists in all of its 18 buildings on Broadway, Wall Street to Bowling Green. The market value of all the property in New York City is $1.4 trillion at the start of 2022 according to New York City's Department of Finance. It would be even higher if these 18 buildings on Lower Broadway were valued at anywhere near as high as they deserve to be and will be if properly developed and presented to the world in the imaginative way they deserve. So while the Central Business District in Midtown is flourishing in the wake of COVID-19 with very bright long-term prospects, even with many of those buildings still significantly empty of employees. In contrast, Lower Manhattan, and most sadly of all, Lower Broadway, Wall Street to Bowling Green, is left behind and struggling for no good reason, only because of a lack of imagination or appreciation of this unique and distinct, magnificent mile, unlike any other in all of New York City. All Lower Broadway needs is imagination, determination, and a new kind of cooperation among the 18 building owners and managers and a willingness to invest in the future and reap the impressive rewards. In other words, understand the new reality we live in. All 18 buildings lining the Lower Broadway corridor or campus are best understood as part of one unified network of opportunity as parts of a unified network that should all realize their common purpose is to work together to elevate the identity and appeal of Lower Broadway, Wall Street to Bowling Green and reap the benefits of doing so.